so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Coding One on One JavaScript third installment. Um, this is the four out of the fourth out of four lessons um, of uh, of a series of lessons that we've been uh, having on on uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So welcome all. Um, let before we do anything else, let me just do a quick round of introductions. Uh, first things first, uh, we are code up. Uh, now, um, I've got with me Ruth and uh, Tyna. Uh, I'll let them introduce uh, themselves in just a second. About CodeUp, uh, we're an international tech school, um, and uh, we are uh, a school that loves uh, programming, data analytics, product management, and uh, we. Um, uh, one of our missions is to make all of these skills um, uh, accessible for uh, non uh, uh, gender non-conforming people, women or, or trans um, communities. And so, um, as I mentioned, one of the things that we really, really love is, is our, to, to share our passion for learning things um, with, as I mentioned, programming, data analytics, product management, and so on. And that workshop is one of them. So I hope you're excited as we are for coding. Um, we're gonna walk you through some concepts, but before I do that, let me just do uh, another introduction about myself. My name is Roger, I was born in Barcelona, and uh, I've got about 10 plus years of experience working in software uh, and software development, but perhaps like some of you, or perhaps not, I do not have a computer science uh, background. I, in fact, I taught myself how to code, and then eventually I formalized my, my knowledge with some formal um, education, and so I'm now in a position to share with you coding. But I get it, it's daunting, but trust me, coding is, is you can learn it, and, and you know today's uh, workshop hopefully is going to be yet another proof of that. So that's me. I'm going to pass it on to Ruth to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so yeah, like Rod said, my name is Ruth, uh, and I'm the program manager here at CodeUp. Um, and so these four workshops, the series has kind of been part of um, Roger, Ty, and I's little project that we've been working on. Uh, and I'm pleased that everybody's been able to join us here for the fourth session. Um, I'll be around at the end for any questions regarding future workshops, maybe our courses, uh, next steps, next resources, uh, if you want to keep on learning after these workshops. I'm also a coding newbie, so I'll be coding along with you all during the workshop. I'll pass it over to Ty to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Ty. Uh, I'm the instructor assistant in CodeUp. Um, and as Hoser, I uh, learned how to program first by myself, and then I got to the university, and yeah, now I'm called up, and I'm glad that everybody's here. Right. So that's us. Um, thanks both Ruth and uh, and Tana for this intro. That's us. Now, before we crack on, um, just want to steer up a bit the chat. Um, Tell us, share on the Zoom chat if there's any project you're currently building at the moment. Um, if there's any project or any ideas of projects that you want to build at the moment, feel free to comment in the chat. And whilst mentioning that, uh, throughout this session, feel free to just interrupt the session or ask questions with the chat. Uh, we're going to keep an eye during the, during the whole session in the chat. So if there's any questions, we will stop or we'll address them at the end. We're also going to have a QA, um, a few minutes at the end to just do QA. Okay, so feel free to share with you. Uh, with us, excuse me, in the chat, if there's any project you're building at the moment. And uh, yeah, just use the chat throughout um, the session to just let us know if there's any questions. Okay. With that, we first, uh, we're going to do a bit of a recap. Uh, we're going to talk about JavaScript and we're going to do a bit of a recap. To do so, I'm going to pass it on to Ty. Um, Ty, I'll have the slides, so you tell me how do you want me to progress. Okay, but I'll pass it over to you. Hello. Um, can I can I share my screen? Oh yeah, actually, that's yeah. a better idea. Yeah, go ahead. Thank and you. Screen share. Yeah. So while Ty does that, just a bit of context. Um, Ty is going to give you all a bit of a recap of some concepts that we've done over the last um, a few lessons. Just uh, in case you did not attend the previous lessons, then you're going to be in a position to just follow along just fine the session. Okay. So uh, Ty, if you want to screen share. All right, can you all see? Yeah. All right, let's do a quick recap here. Uh, so as you said, the last sessions, um, we have HTML and HTML is basically the structure of the website. 
is a head, is a body, is the, uh, for example, the bones. Um, so everything that you put in your website is in HTML. HTML is like the home, all right? So every content and the layouts and the, the structure is HTML. And we have um, the CSS, which is the style of the website. So for example, um, the colors, the font, uh, size, everything is CSS. So everything that you want to style in your website, uh, we use CSS to do it. And then we have JavaScript is the interaction. So it's like the brain of the website. Uh, every button, every form, every pop-up, every interaction with the website, we do it with JavaScript. So um, the three of the, the mix between them is the, the website, <clears throat> the combination of them construct the website. And here, uh, let's talk a little bit about JavaScript. As we said before, um, we have um, variables and variables like a um, box with a unique name. And you have here shoes and clothes and books. So uh, to construct a variable, we need a keyword and we call it let in JavaScript. We have a unique name, a sign sign, and then the content. Keep this in mind. Uh, it has to be a unique name and it has to be with the keyword, all right? So everything that you put after the assignment is the content that you store in your, um, in your variable. And any questions thus far? Sorry, go, go back. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, any questions thus far? So just to recap, uh, websites are a combination of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. You do not need to know HTML or CSS for today's session, so don't worry about it. And then a key aspect, as Tanya just mentioned, is JavaScript variables, right? So think of them as a box, right? So with the formula that Tanya just outlined below, think of it as a box where you store where you store data. Okay, so unique name, and then you store anything. Yeah. Any questions on that? Just feel free to uh, drop a note on the chat. I think there's a question. Are there any other keywords you didn't ask uh, to create a variable? Yes, there are. There are actually two more. Um, without going into too much detail, um, they refer to the, um, the how can I say this, the length on, on how long the data is stored. So let is the neutral form. You can also use VAR and CONST, so var and const. Um, the difference between them is a bit more involved, but it has to do with the capability that you have to overwrite the variable content. That is to change what you store in the box, right? So there's two other concepts, but, and the difference is, um, I'm, I'll send you some links if you want after, um, and the difference between the different types of, of creating variables has to do with the way you can store and overwrite information. Yeah, but for now, we're gonna be sticking with lead, which is the most common one. Does that answer your question? Cool. Um, Tina, sorry, oh, back to you. No problem. All right. Uh, another thing about variables is that a variable can just store one piece of data. All right. Um, and we have types of variables of data. We have strings um, and we have numbers in this example. And strings is everything between double quotes. So for example, if you put a number between double quotes, it's going to be a string. And numbers, they are just, you don't need a double quotes, it's just string. So <clears throat> for strings, uh, JavaScript interprets everything between. Uh, so if you write anything that we can write after the assignment sign between quotes is a string and numbers, they just, you can just assign them as a number. We have here some examples. Roger, would you like to add something? No, just think of strings as whatever you use to, whatever you text to your messages and to your friends on WhatsApp or emails, that content is effectively what in JavaScript you would just place between codes. The rest is um, exactly right. So think of strings as just pure text. Yeah, text that right. you just want to include. Yeah. All right, uh, so here are simple variables, okay? And then let's talk about another type 
of variables. So here we have a rate. So as I said before, a variable just can store one piece of data. Um, arrays, they can store a list of data. They can store a collection of data. And the difference here is, okay, we put let, uh, is the same, and you put a unique name, and the assign is assignment sign. The only difference here is that you put a, you open a square brackets at the beginning, and you close it with another square bracket. And you put the data, and between uh, your content, you put uh, commas, all right? You separate them with commas. And the, uh, here we have a collection of strings because they are between quotes. So the numbers you're, you're uh, seeing is the indexes. Uh, don't worry about it. JavaScript does it automatically. So every time that you want to access the data, for example, if I want to access sandals, the only thing that I have to do is I write the name of the array, and then between brackets, I put the, the index of um, the array, and then I obtain the value, the content, all right? So for example, um, if I construct an array, JavaScript will assign every, every value with an index, and for, uh, it starts with zero and go to, to the, the numbers of content that I have. All right. Any questions thus far? Anyone? On arrays or <laughs> variables? If there's any questions, just drop a note to chat, okay? All right. So um, let's talk about arrays methods. How do you, you know how to construct an array? Um, as you said, as we talked before, we can add uh, something, some content into an array, and you can delete. And for this, we just need the name of the array and dot push, and then you put uh, between um, if it is a string between quotes, and we can add. Remember that you just add items um, at the end of the array, okay? With push push add an item in the, at the end of the array. Also, we can delete uh, an element and you will write the name of the array dot pop and then we can delete it. So push um, the name of the array dot push and then the content between the quotes. And the second one is show, shoes and then dot pop to delete. All right, and then we can add and delete. And pop as well, just delete the last element of the array. Um, if you have any questions, just write in the chat. All right, so functions. <clears throat> uh, with functions, I like to think about functions as a box that you can, you can input, you can give some input and you do an operation inside, and then the function returns an output based on the operation inside this box. So here we have a function uh, called sum, and inside the function is doing an operation with, <clears throat> is returning this operation, e, uh, a plus b. And then when you call it, with um, with numbers, with real numbers, it does the operation and it returns the result of these operations. The number, uh, the the input a and b, we call it parameters. And the all uh, and the real uh, when you call the function, the real um, the real content we call it arguments. So we use functions for those things that we want to repeat in our code for not repeating pieces of code. We do a function, we name it. And then every time that you, you want to do this operation again, we call this function by the name. And with uh, another, uh, we can put here instead of two and two, we can call it again with another 
and other types of input. Um, would you like to add something, Harder? <laughs> no, uh, make sure that you ground those concepts about functions. Um, again, function is a reusable piece of code, right? So when you define it, right, then you can just use it again and again. So you know, for example, at the bottom, we created a variable named result and we stored in it the function passing it to elements, right? Now I could just create a second variable and call that function again. So the beauty about functions is that it's code that you can just reuse again and again um, on your on your scripts, really. So um, just that's just a bit of a foundation just to get the concepts. We, we're going to see later functions again, but it's it's good that you've got that foundation. So yeah. All right. So I pass this to you. Cool. So uh, you want to yeah you want to stop screen chatting? Yes. Please. All right. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Any questions before I move on? Any questions on any concepts that we've seen? Please drop an order into the chat. Okay. Cool. Today I'm going to introduce to you a few concepts that um, are going to be critical, I think, throughout your journey. First off, uh, let me introduce you to you the date object. So earlier you saw that Tina told you about. Um, strings and numbers right so how in a variable which is nothing but a box you can store information so you could store things like numbers text and also arrays right now i want you to i want to show you how you can store the date object right now what's the date object and what is it useful well the date object obviously the name reveals itself talks about date right so the the day that we are the month and so on now why is this useful why do we want to manipulate with uh with date object so before we get into how we do it, um, typically, as I mentioned in previous lessons, you will want your websites to do things automatically. So you want your website to do something when you're not looking, right? So for example, if a user does something, you want your website to respond to that action, right? So that's uh, user action driven, right? Another one would be using uh, time scheduling. For example, any application that you use, whether it's an app application or web application that schedules something, Right, schedule something. It's effectively leveraging some sort of date object, so all the equivalent of it. Okay, so the date object is very useful to schedule works or to to um, effectively give additional complexity to your scripts. Okay, let's have a look at how it's built. Mm -hmm. Cool. So the date object, as as anything in JavaScript, uses specific keywords. In the case of the date object, you use the new date. Okay, exactly like you see it here. So we use this keyword new space and then date with capital D. Okay. Now a couple of things to comment on that. First is we see this new uh, keyword there. Now new in JavaScript is a keyword. So henceforward, once you continue your journey on JavaScript, I would just avoid in general using the keyword new for anything. So if you need to create a variable, just avoid calling it new or a function name, just avoid the word uh, new altogether. Okay. Reason being is um, new has a certain specific magical powers in the world of JavaScript. Okay. Um, so it creates a new date object. Now let's understand this a bit. So when we all used to travel probably last year or before the current situation, when you travel, say for example, to another continent, what happens is that uh, you, as you cross the border, in some countries, what they do is they take your passport and they have a stamp and effectively they put that stamp in your passport, right? So they say, okay, welcome to country X. And then the uh, border officer just puts a stamp on your passport. That stamp includes the exact, chain, exact time when you actually crossing the border, right? Now think of it as new data, something like this. When you write this line of code in a script, what JavaScript is doing is putting a stamp and saying right now, the time it is such and such time, okay? So think of it as a way to just take a snapshot of the current time, okay? Obviously time keeps going, seconds change. So if I do a new date now and new date tomorrow, obviously it's gonna be different. So it's just like a stamp, okay? So the first thing I do, just like in anything in, in JavaScript, I store this in a variable, right? I'm using this variable name, D, just so you see uh, different examples of, of variable names. So sometimes in some, um, Scripts, you might see variable names that have funny names. Here, I'm just doing it D short for date, okay? So all of, from now on, I no longer need to handle the date object, right? I handle the D variable. Why? Because remember, variables are a box. So the moment I store something in that variable, that variable, that box gains all the powers 
that the actual content gives it to it, right? So from now on, every single magical power, quote, quote, that new date object has is passed on to the D variable, okay? Everyone with me thus far? So just understand that when you write down new date, you're invoking the date object. You're asking JavaScript to tell you what time is it right now. And by virtue of storing this in a variable, the variable D has all of that for, uh, information and power stored in it, okay? Now, if I wanted to see what D has, what, what this, what's the information stored, um, we could have a look at this with console log. And I'll show you how to do it after. If you haven't attended previous lessons, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to do it after. But effectively, this is pretty much what you would see inside, right? So you would see all, the, all that string of information, right? We can guess pretty much what that is. It's the sat, nov, 21, and so on. So we can pretty much guess what that is. Now, technically, the new date variable, what it does is it counts the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. Now, don't ask me why, but when they created JavaScript, um, what they did is they have, JavaScript has like a memory. It just keeps counting the number of milliseconds, right? Since January 1st, 1970, up to now. So now it will be like millions and millions of milliseconds. But what JavaScript does automatically for you is it converts that huge number in something you can make sense of. And it does it by virtue of turning that input into what you see here in the screen, right? Now, this information has a lot of, uh, this, excuse me, this variable right now has a lot of data. So typically you would want more targeted, or you would do more targeted operations with date, right? You would like to know the day, the month, and so on, right? Now, the date object comes with some additional superpowers. Now, similar to the methods that Tina told us about earlier, the data object gives this variable some methods to access its information easier because you as a web developer, you know, you're not going to be playing with all of that raw data. So what you would do is if you create a variable called like, today, yeah, and then you do d.getDay, and remember d is effectively this variable here, which in turn receives this method thanks to the fact that it's got date stored in it, yeah? So these only exist in the D variable because new date has given it to it, okay? So that's how the information flow. Now that's a method from the date object. Now get day will give you effectively the number five. Why is that? Because um, this method returns the number of the day that we are on right now on a scale of zero to six. So in JavaScript and pretty much in any programming language, numbers start with zero. And so the first day of the week is Monday and it's the number zero, right? So, and then zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, being uh, six Sunday and thus today Saturday. So it would give us the number five, okay? Now, before I proceed, any questions on anything that we've um, just covered? So let me know, I'll just give you a second. Make sure we understand that, okay. So that's that. Now that's how we get days, right? But how if we want to say, let me show you another example. If I wanted to get the actual hour, so it will be similar. D dot get hours, know the plural S at the end. And that our variable, what it would store is effectively the number 10. The reason for that is because we're in the 10th hour. So similar to days, zero being the first hour uh, of the day, 23rd, uh, 23, excuse me, being the 20, the, the last hour of the day, because now it's 10 something, 10, 30 ish, it will be number 10, okay? Now, let's take a look at this as to how it looks like. To do so, I'm gonna be using code pen. Uh, those that have attended the uh, previous lessons will be familiar with it. If you haven't, don't worry about it. So in short, code pen is a platform that allows you to code right, in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and see the result of these three uh, sets of instructions together. Now, as you saw earlier, Tyna told us that websites are made of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so what we've got here is these three windows that allow us to mix all of that and effectively see the result down here, right? So this is the website that I've built, okay? Now, let's have a look at this um, date just so you can see and touch it. I'm just gonna uh, close all of that. I'm gonna go to the bottom. And uh, I wanna show you a bit just in action the date object. Now to do so, I'm gonna be using um, the console um, here. So if you click here on console, top left, it opens a, a little window, okay? Now console is, um, it's, uh, we could do an entire session just on console, but just so we now understand it, it's like a little window when you, where you can see some data. So it helps you when you're coding because you can see you know, some of the data that is stored and it's a bit like a, a log. It's a way for you to see um, some of the information that you're playing with 
uh, in JavaScript. Now, before I continue, let me know if there's any questions. But let's create the variable. Let's call it date. Yeah. And then we're going to do new date. All right. So that's how we said we would be creating a date object. OK. Now I do con. Now, just so you know, we're recording this session, so don't worry if you cannot code alongside with me. Um, if I go too fast to something, uh, feel free to ask any questions, but either way, we're going to be recording the session. I would recommend for you to just watch it after at your own leisure um, and just make sure you ground those concepts. Okay. But if, if there's anything that I type too fast or something, just let me know. Okay. So we want to see what's in date. So we'll write down here date. When I run that, what um, this platform does is it executes this code, right? So here I see a huge date object, right? This huge date object is effectively what I was mentioning earlier about the, all the raw data. So we don't want to see that because we cannot play with that. And what we do is we create another variable called today, which is clear that, and do date.getDate, right? And then if I display that, you will should be able to see Number six, which is the uh, Saturday. Uh, now, one thing I want to show you that is important is look what happens if um, I, uh, I mentioned earlier that this is a capital letter, right? Um, what happens if I made a mistake on code? Now, this is not going to be a lesson on debugging, but debugging is effectively the process of identifying errors. And I want you to start getting familiar with that. So if I change this D to a capital lowercase d, right? Um, I'm, I'm effectively not following JavaScript instructions. So JavaScript will not understand that, right? If I run this code now, Java, the console is going to give me an error message, right? And the error message is nothing but saying, I cannot find the date object that you're talking about. I cannot access that because I, I don't understand this, right? In fact, let me just change it so it's clearer. You just do it like this. So if I run this, just want to really see where the error is for absolute clarity. It says that date is not defined, right? Why is that? Because date doesn't mean anything for JavaScript. JavaScript is expecting D or is expecting some text, for example, something like that. But JavaScript cannot make sense of anything like that, right? So now these errors, and I've got to tell you, no matter how good you get at JavaScript, no matter if you end up working for a big tech company, you will always be making errors. It's important you get familiar with reading the error message that the console gives you because they help you do what's called debugging. Debugging, OK? Which is the process of finding errors and effectively improving your code, OK? So just wanted to give you a bit of intuition as to how that works, OK? Now, if I just um, amend that, then I would hopefully get the result that I wanted. OK. Any questions on this? No? OK. Cool. So that's the data object. You'll say, listen, Roger, this is very good and everything, but uh, I just don't know if I want my, um, I want to learn JavaScript just to get numbers in the screen, right? And know that Saturday is the, you know, number day, this day, or the hour is such, or the hour is such. That doesn't mean anything to me. Now, data or the data object, excuse me, is to be used in conjunction with other functionalities of JavaScript. When you do so, it's extremely powerful um, when you put it to work with other features mm -hmm. of JavaScript. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that when you, when you ask a programming language to use something, when you schedule a task, what the JavaScript is going to be doing probably is going to be comparing the current time. So you think of it as JavaScript taking stamps every time, calculating each time right now, and comparing it to the time that you asked me to do something. So let's say, for example, I want to schedule an email to be automatically sent tomorrow at 10 a.m., right? What the machine is going to be doing is going to be comparing the time that you told me, that is Sunday 10 a.m., with the current time now. So for us to do so, we need to show how we need to understand how can we, how can systems can compare things? How can, how can JavaScript can compare the instruction you give me with the current time that we've got right now, okay? Now to do so, I wanna show you how do we compare values in JavaScript. Now, I, I know it sounds conceptually like a big of a jump, but promise I promise to you by the end of this slide, it will all start to make sense, okay? So just bear with me for now. Now, how do we compare values in JavaScript? So there's several commands we can use. 
we can use the equality operator, okay? What we're doing here is we're asking, when we write this down, we're asking JavaScript to check whether the element on the left is the same as the element on the right, okay? To do so, we use what equality operator, which is this assigned symbol twice, right? We use it twice. Here, we're asking JavaScript, hey, JavaScript, is what's on the left the same as on the right-hand side? Go and, and, and find out for me, okay? So these operators are not passive, are active statements. You're asking JavaScript to confirm whether the, green, the element in green is the same as the element in orange. So here, concretely, you're asking JavaScript whether the element is the same. You can also do the way around. You can ask JavaScript, can you confirm whether the element on the left is different than the element on the right, okay? So it's the inequality operator, all right? Now, another one is uh, less than. So we're asking JavaScript to check that the element in green is a smaller than, than, than the one on the right-hand side and the way around, whether it's greater than, okay? So we're asking JavaScript to go and do something with that. JavaScript is gonna actively compare those two elements, okay? So equal, unequal, less than, greater than, on last but not least, less than equal or greater than equal. So that is, is number seven on the example on the top right, is number seven smaller or equal than 0 0.1? JavaScript, go ahead and find out if that's the case. And the one at the bottom is what we're saying is JavaScript. Hey, JavaScript, is 11 equal or greater than 12? Yeah, so this is effectively what we're asking JavaScript to check. Now, all of these things result into what's called um, a boolean, okay? And I'm gonna explain right now what a boolean is. But before I do that, um, are we clear on the operators that we're using here? Does everybody understand equality on the top left, inequality, less than, greater than, and so on? If there's any questions, just give you a second now to think through. Make sure we understand how we compare values in JavaScript. Yeah? Cool. Now, with all of these, we are comparing, uh, we're using these operators. And as I mentioned, it's an active process. JavaScript is gonna go and do something. It's gonna go and compare those two elements and it's gonna give us back one thing, which is called a Boolean, okay? So JavaScript is gonna compare, for example, whether two is equal to two and the response to that is gonna be a Boolean, okay? So the question obviously that be is backed is what's a Boolean? Easy, it's a value that is either true or false. So right now we're entering a fourth type of data. It's not text, it's not a number, it's not a date object, it's not an array, it's not a function, it's a Boolean. Now a Boolean is, can only be two things, either true or false. And true is written on itself, no strings, nothing else. It's just a value in itself. Think of it as a traffic light. It's either green or red. That's all it understands, okay? So JavaScript is gonna give us back a Boolean as a response of a comparison. So let's have a look at an example. So if I use this equality operator, right? I'm asking JavaScript, is the, are these two elements the same? JavaScript is gonna say, yes, they are. They are the same. So the response we get back is true, okay? Another example, um, hey, JavaScript, can you compare, can you tell me that the element on the left is different from the, the element on the right? Okay, so can you confirm or deny whether the element on the left is different to the one on the right? And JavaScript is gonna say, yes, it's correct, because the element hello is not the same as by, and because we're saying, we're stating the inequality of them, JavaScript is saying that this is true, okay? Two more examples, just so we can ground this concept. Um, another one, equality operator. Um, does anyone want to take a guess as to what that happens? If anyone wants to guess, um, feel free to drop it in the chat. I'll give you a second to do so. Whether you think this statement returns true or false. If anyone takes a guess, don't worry if you don't know it. So we've got actually a false and we've got a true uh, thus far. So someone is gonna get it right, I suppose. So this is gonna be false. The reason for that is because uh, in the wall of JavaScript, um, a uh, capital letter is not the same as a lowercase letter, it's different, right? And so JavaScript will consider those two sentences, to, uh, those two strings to actually be different. And we're asking JavaScript, JavaScript, can you tell me that these two are the same? And JavaScript says, hey, hold on your second, watch, this is false. So I'm giving you back the Boolean false, okay? And one more, what about this one? Anyone wants to take a guess? So remember, we're comparing two pieces of text 
and in this instance we're using the inequality operator what do you think is going to happen here right so i think there's um, some consensus in terms of false so that's right it's false the reason for that is because we're telling javascript that the element on the left is not the same as the element on the right and javascript says you're wrong my friend these are the same and thus this statement is false okay so very simply in an example we would just create a variable so let condition being this and the value of that variable would be effectively true okay Cool, let's have a look at just um, here. So let me just remove all of that, just so you see the example. So I can just create a condition. It's called, for example, two. Yeah, like this. And then I can just do console.log. And I'm just going to see what's the result of that operation, which is effectively, we should sit here in a console, which is true. Okay, so this. I'm going to create another one example is just true. Okay. And this true is not like this It's not a string. It's just a value in itself. Okay. Now here a bit outside of the scope, but what do you think happens if I compare this with this? Anyone can take a guess. Is it going to be, uh, I'm going to get a Boolean because I'm asking JavaScript to compare two elements. I'm saying whether this element is the same as the element on the right hand side. Now, could someone say whether this is going to be true or it's going to be false? I'll just give you a second to think it through. Okay, if I run this, that gives me that this is actually true. The reason for that is because this is true. An example is true and thus true is equal to true, which is what we're saying here. And we're saying true equals true, which is true. I know it's a bit complicated, but don't worry too much about it. Just understand that volumes are true or false and that they result, uh, they come as a result of a comparison. Okay. This is just a bit of a more of advanced um, uh, example. Okay. Cool. So that's Booleans. Uh, now you'll say, Roger, I still don't understand why do we need Booleans. We're getting there. Trust me. So we now know the date object and we know how to compare values, right? That's extremely powerful. Now, let me show you why. Let me just show you the last piece, uh, one, not the last piece, but one, another piece, uh, another concept I want to show you, <clears throat> and then you'll see how it all comes together, I promise. Now, um, Booleans are useful to define a condition. So as I mentioned earlier, it's like a traffic light. It's green or red, right? And so we can get JavaScript to do things when the traffic light is green and not do certain things when the traffic light is red. So effectively, you can condition a bit the code because thus far everything was happening in one flow let me put in an example we're going to talk a bit about what's called conditional statements so why do we need conditional statements in the first place in javascript what we do is as you remember javascript executes from top to bottom a statement right a statement is just simply a variable declaration so let roger equal uh to be uh 24 for example right that's a statement or creating a function or doing something like that, okay? Now what JavaScript will do is we'll just go from the top one at a time, go all the way down, okay? That's a bit boring in that it just does one thing. There's no complexity. It just takes the first statement, executes every single one of them all the way down, okay? Now this is useful, but it doesn't open the door to complex uh, scripting, right? It doesn't give us any power as to just add some complexity to the scenarios that our script can cater for, right? To do so, we use what simply condition. So the first statement is executed, but when you get here, we put what's called an if statement, right? So it's this if word, this is a keyword as well, then some brackets. Between those brackets, we're gonna put the condition that is true. That is, we're gonna tell JavaScript, when this is true, I want you to execute what happens in between those curly braces. Now what happens on these curly braces is gonna be a statement that is only gonna happen if this condition in brackets is true, okay? If this condition is not true, using another keyword, we're going to say else, that is, if this condition is not true, execute what's inside those curly braces. Okay? So it's going to execute that, right? So thus far, JavaScript will only execute two statements. The first one, the very one at the top, and either the one into the if block or the one inside the else block. Okay? And then at the end, you can just go ahead and execute the last one. All right? Let's put an example. 
So here I create a variable, net, uh, uh, let number to be two. Then I say if number is equal to two, if that condition is true, print in the console match. If it's not true, keep on the console, keep looking. And once you've done one of these two, effectively you're going to see um, uh, we're going to write down console log n. Okay? So that's just effectively some workflow that you need to be aware of with conditions, right? That simple. Any questions on that? No? Easy, right? Cool. With all what we've learned, um, I want to now sort of do a bit of a wrap up of uh, some of the concepts that we've seen thus far. Actually, before I do that, let me just quickly demonstrate that for you. So let me just do condition to be true, just so you see it on, on your own terms. So this is if, okay? This is where we're gonna put the condition, right? Else, right? Now the condition is gonna be if condition is equal to two, we're just gonna say match, okay? Remember here, console lock is just gonna display that, all right? Then if this is not true, no match. And at the end, we're gonna execute one, that is gonna be a bit cheeky. I'm gonna say, I will be displayed no matter what. All right, so here you'll see how JavaScript is gonna imprint one of these two and then the one at the end, okay? So as I, as I was saying in code, don't take my word for it, let's just have a look. So you see that it's only printing two, so it's printing the second, the first one, excuse me, because the condition is met, and then it's printing the one at the end, the cheeky one that says, I will be displayed no matter what, okay? Simple, right? Now, with all what we've learned and all what we've learned in previous lessons, now I wanna um, get an exercise which is guess the answer, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, examples and I would like for you to guess um, what the answer would be, okay? So let's take a look at the first one. Let's get to the answer. We're gonna be leveraging concepts that we've learned across all the four, uh, excuse me, three JavaScript lessons, okay? So my question to you is, what's the value of the result variable, okay? I'm gonna give you some time to think it through. Um, whilst you do so, feel free to comment in the chat what do you think the, the value of the result variable is. Whilst, it, whilst you do so, I'm just gonna walk you through some code. Um, make sure you just don't overthink it, just try to, flow, to follow the flow, okay? So first we're creating a variable, name array, that has three elements in it, okay? three numbers. Then we're creating a second variable um, named num. And in this num, we're putting an element from the array, okay? So we're pulling one of the numbers from the array and effectively we're storing it here, okay? Now forget about these variables. We create a function, okay? Remember function as Tiny showed us earlier, it's a piece of code that is executed. You feed something to the function and it gives you back something, okay? Now we're feeding it a number. This is a placeholder for now. So we don't know exactly what that will be, but this function is gonna be using that number, okay? And it's gonna say this function is gonna compare this number with zero. And if it's uh, gonna give us this variable, so remember this is a string, okay? So it's not a Boolean, this is a string. It's gonna either give us this result or this result, okay? So this is the function definition, okay? Now remember, nothing happens here, we're just defining the function. We're telling JavaScript, my friend, go and store that function named test number because I might be using it eventually. And then we go exactly do that. So we create a third variable called result and inside we store this function, we execute this function. And this function, we pass it the num, which is effectively the same value that we created here, okay? And then result is then printed onto the console log, okay? So I see some people have already replied. Um, don't worry if you don't, if this doesn't make sense just yet. Um, if you still don't follow this along, don't worry. I would just suggest for you to watch the uh, previous three uh, lessons, in particular the last two, because they've been on JavaScript solely. <clears throat> and you'll be able to just understand that in no time, okay? Otherwise, feel free to reach, reach out to us and we'll, you know, I'm more than happy for us to help you sort of a walk you through, okay? Now, I've seen some people that have already replied. So most people agree on positive and that's exactly what it gets. So positive is the result. So let me just walk you through. So effectively the trick comes here, so to speak, this array. First, this 
element one is what Tina told us earlier is the array index. So it, it starts from zero. So this will be the element zero, one. That's the first element, uh, excuse me, the second element with index um, one, that's five. So think of num to be from now on, think of num to be the number five, okay? Now, then we declare this function. Now, and we invoke it here and we pass it this number. Remember that this number, num is right now five, okay? So this green number is five. Now five is greater than zero. Thus, it returns the value positive. If number was not greater than zero, it would return this, okay? But because um, it meet, meets the condition, it returns that value positive, which is stored onto the variable result, which in turn is printed, okay? Anyone does not understand that or would like to sort of for us to go through it, which is a bit of a basic example? No? Okay. Now I'm going to raise the bar. We're going to show you another example, a bit more difficult, okay? Because there's a bit of code. I've just broken it down into pieces, okay? Um, I'm going to show you an example. I don't want you to just bang your head on the wall if you don't understand it. Just try to follow along with me, okay? But I will ask you the same thing. Try to guess the answer, okay? Now, first things first, and that's another example. First, we create a function called check input, okay? Which takes an element. All right, this element is compared, right? And based upon that comparison, then it's gonna return one value or the other, okay? That's one function, right? Second function we create, it's called hcalc, okay? It takes an input, right? It creates a date object inside, right? And then it gives us the year. Now, I don't want you to understand just yet this sentence. Just assume that the value year is 2020, okay? Now I can explain this to you after, but if you don't, if, if uh, we don't have time, don't worry, just assume that let year is 2020, okay? So with this number, then this function goes and returns a string concatenation, which is a concept that we've seen in previous lessons. Um, it returns that string concatenation, okay? So thus far, we have two functions, okay? We're not using them, we're just doing function declaration, okay? Now what we do at the top is we create a variable called user input, which is minus 50. Then there's a comment here. And because it's a comment, remember, we can just ignore that, it's just a comment, all right? And then we're creating a if else uh, block, right? So in this condition, we're invoking one of the functions that we've defined earlier with the user input. And the result of that function is compared to the false Boolean, okay? That's the first block and it will return something or will do something. And if this condition is not met, then we're gonna create a variable and then trigger the second function, taking the input user input and console lock uh, the variable output, okay? Now my question is, what uh, will you see in the console screen? So one thing will be, one of these two things need to happen. So I would like to ask you to please find out which one of the two and what is it that you would see on the console screen, okay? So I'm just gonna leave you some time to think about it. Um, just go through the logic and um, I would recommend for you to start on the left. Make sure you understand each function, the one on the top left and one on the bottom left. Understand them in isolation. So don't worry about the stuff on the right-hand side just yet. Just focus on understanding what each function does and what's the expected value you would get out of them. And then effectively, we start using those functions here. So I'll give you some time, think about it. If you've got the answer, feel free to um, put in uh, the chat. Right, I see some people that have already replied. I'll give you just a few more seconds. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense yet, okay? Feel free to watch the videos after or ask us any questions. Okay, so I'm going to spoil it. I'll give you the spoiler. It provides, it gives the message, provide a valid message, okay? Now let's take a look as to why that happens. But before I do so, imagine now, that's the first scenario. Imagine that instead of minus 50, the user input value was 1995, okay? So just 
exactly the same code, exactly the same logic, but assume that instead of the user input value being minus 50, it's actually 1995. See if you could please tell me what message is printed and what's the value of that. So it's a second scenario. So I'll give you some time. Just a few more seconds. I see some people already putting answers. All right, let me spoil it for you. You are 25 years old, that's the answer. Okay, let's take a look, shall we? Let's do the first exercise, so the minus 50. Okay, this function, um, takes an input and compares it to zero. Okay, it says, is it greater or equal than zero, right? If that's the case, it will result, it will give me the same input. So if I pass the number 10 here, right? If I pass the number 10, it would give me back the number 10, right? Because it's greater than zero. If the element I'm passing it is not greater than zero or smaller than zero, then it will go, gonna give me the value false, which is a Boolean, okay? Now, that's all what this function does. So what you can expect from check input is either the number that you pass it. So as, as, as I mentioned, if I pass 10, it's gonna give me 10 back, or it's gonna give me the Boolean false. That's all what this function does, all right? And this second function, I'm gonna pass it a name, a number, excuse me. And all what it's gonna do is, uh, if the number is say, for example, 1995, as it was the second scenario, all what it's gonna do is it's gonna return a sentence that says you are something years old, okay? Now this something is where the trick comes in. You take the input, say for example, is 1995, okay? As we saw last year is a value of 2020. So all what we're doing is we're passing a string that says you are. We're concatenating to that string uh, um, um, an operation, excuse me, a mathematical operation. So year, which is 2020 minus the input that we pass, we just, we said it was 1995 and thus it uh, deducts those two, which in this instance returns 25 and it says you are 25 and then another sentence that says years old. So the whole output is you are 25 years old. Okay, that's what this function does, all right? Now let's go on to the conditions. All what we're doing here is we're invoking those functions. So those two on the left are static right now, we invoke them here. So. First, if the condition has to be that the result of this check input function has to be false. So if this is false, it's gonna be equal to false. And if that's the case, this condition is met, and thus this is the statement that is gonna be executed, okay? So for us to see a provider valid age, we need to see that this check input has to be false. Now let's find that out. Imagine now that the value is minus 50, okay? This yellow thing is minus 50, which means that check input, I'm passing minus 50 all the way up here. So assume that input in green right now is minus 50. Because minus 50 is um, smaller than zero. So remember this function says, if the number is greater than zero, I'll give you the number back. But because it's not, because the number is smaller than zero, this condition is not met, which means that it's gonna give me back the result, uh, excuse me, the Boolean false, okay? So if we come back here, check input with user input being minus 50, all of this is actually false. All of this is just false. And because false is the same as false, this condition is met, and then it just prints provide a valid age, okay? So that's why the message you get in the first scenario is provide a valid age, okay? When user input is minus 50. Now note that in the first scenario, you don't even care about this function not even executed because JavaScript will stop here. It will not execute this block of code. It will just do this one, okay? Any questions on that? No? Cool. Let's see what happens when we use the user input value to be 1995. So again, we do the same. Starts here, 
check input, assume that this is 1995. We go to this function and this time the condition is met. Why is that? Because the input is 1995 and that's greater than zero. And so this function is gonna give us back this number. All right, it's gonna give us back this number. All right, so the number is gonna give us back is 1995, okay? So now this, instead of being false, you need to assume that this is a number, 1995. All of that, all of this, is a number 1995. And 1995 is not the same as false. This is not the same thing, right? It's different. One thing is a Boolean, one thing is a number, they are different things. And JavaScript says, sorry, bad luck, my friend, this is not the same. And because of that, it skips this statement and goes on to the else condition, all right? Now we get to else, um, creates a variable, and in that variable, it creates the result of a function. So it triggers, it invokes this function xcorg, right? Remember user input right now is still 1995. So it goes ahead and passes this here. So assume that input is 1995. Then we create a date, we create the year variable, which as you saw, um, create is just the number 2020. And what it returns is you are 2020 minus 1995. Remember it's 1995, which is 25. It says you are 25 years old, right? stores all of that in HCOG and HCOG stores it in output, which is in turn printed on the console. And that's why we see you are 25 years old. Okay, any questions on this? Make sense? Cool, for those that have just even attempted to answer, good job. Um, don't worry if you don't get it um, right the first time. Um, I would suggest for you to watch the previous videos and this one later and just try to ground these concepts. Um, it's important that you see how if else is actually uh, working really nicely with, in combination with some or, or most of the values that we've seen, right? So here we're covering variables, string concatenation, if blocks, functions, and so on, booleans, right? So it's important that um, it would be super cool if you could just uh, understand that this through a whole block of code, okay? So just watch the video, make sure you pause it, and make sure you just make let each concept grow, okay? Cool. Now, with what we've learned, Let's do some additional JavaScript. Now we've done a couple of exercises. Let me just put some, some code on to practice. So first I'm gonna clear the console. Okay, close this. Let me just show you first, what is it that I wanna do? So I've got my coffee shop here, website, some code, right? And I've got this today special that is actually empty right now, right? So what I would like is to show on weekdays, I would like to show one dish, and on weekends, I would like to show another dish, right? So I would like my um, uh, customers to see that the today special is one specific for the weekend and one specific for the weekday, okay? And I don't wanna need to be at Friday midnight checking, you know, if I need to change that. I want this automatically to happen. So let's just go ahead and uh, change that. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just update this. So just give me a second. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace today's special with something, because at the moment it's blank, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find it. So it's this special dish, all right? And then I'm gonna just replace that. So it's this class. And then here I'm gonna call it blah, okay? Just to make sure I've got something. I'm just gonna put a placeholder text, okay? So I've got this now, all right? So don't worry about now. All what I'm doing here is I'm just using the DOM uh, DOM manipulation, um, I target the class. So this class is effectively this section here. And what I do is I replace the content with some text, which for now is gonna be blah, or let's put something a bit nicer, just place holder, okay? Now, what's the objective that we have? Is the requirement that we have is show a different uh, dish for weekdays, oops, weekdays versus weekends, okay? That's the problem that we have, all right? Oh, well, that's the business requirement. Okay, let's try to do some pseudo coding. So the coding is nothing but taking a business requirement and uh, effectively breaking it down into small um, tasks, right? That's extremely useful process for you to follow when you continue, as you continue your journey in JavaScript, it's gonna be super useful for you to master that uh, skill because when you need to break down really complex problems, it really helps, okay? So what is it that we need to do? First thing we need to do is we need we need a special dish for weekdays 
versus weekends. So if I want to display a different dish here on the weekdays, weekdays and the weekends, I need to have two dishes, right? I need to have that information ready, okay? Second thing I need to do is I need to create uh, an if else statement, right? So I need to show a condition or let's just call it apply a condition, all right? So I need to apply a condition that allows me to show one or the other, all right? Then I need to also find get hold of current day of week. I need to find out what's the day of the week, right? So I'm going to need to do that. And when I've got all of this, then I can go ahead and uh, effectively give a response to my business requirement. So let's go step at a time. We need a special dish for weekends and weekdays. I've already done that earlier. So I've got here um, two variables, right? Um, actually, the business owner gave me the data like this. So it gave me an array with text and the price. That's not exactly how I asked her to give it to me, but also be acquainted that when you work in real projects, the input that you need as a web developer is not always going to come exactly how you want it, right? So typically, you would have all the database, all the information in your database. So here we've got all the items, and here we've got all the prices. I wish we could have it everything here, but the business owner has decided to give it to me like this. That's what we need to work with. Okay, then allow me to first do the uh, step three first. So let me first get hold of the date. So as we saw, I can just do let date, right? And just do a new date, right? That gives me that whole block of raw data, right? And then I want to get today, right? So I'm just going to do day dot get day, all right? And as you saw earlier, that's a method that effectively calls into the date object and gives me back a number, which is definitive of the um, day of week. All right, so let's have a look. Make sure I've got this information. Just open the console. I'm gonna run this. Oops, excuse me. I forgot this. I forgot the brackets. So now I'm gonna get a number. All right, cool. Actually, let me do one thing. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I just want to check because um, I'm getting a six, right? And today is Saturday. Uh, and I mentioned it's a fifth. It might be just because of the configuration I've got on my laptop. So um, this should be uh, either a five or a six. So don't worry about it. Okay. It might just have to do with my local configuration in this computer. So anyway, try it out after at home. Um, it should give you five or six um, for the weekend. Okay. Cool. Now we've got this. Um, now I've got the date. So this is effectively what I want JavaScript to be comparing. Now JavaScript is remember it's stupid right because, uh, machines are stupid they just apply brute force so they know that this is effectively what we need to compare to. so let's go ahead and do the comparison now so thing i'm going to do is allow me to move these at the top just do this and this to be step two this step three. okay now if okay something happens i want javascript to update um today's special with weekday dish okay that's effectively what we're saying if this condition is not met else i want to update today's special with weekend dish all right that's pretty much what we want to achieve here and just put some space right that's the block of code that effectively we'll want to execute now this condition needs to be met what is this condition to be it has to be the condition that we have, it has to be that is week, uh, uh, weekends, right? Now we know that weekends are either the number five or number uh, six, right? Because it's Saturday and Sunday. So we know that the variable today, it has to be five or six, or six is the weekend, right? So all what we do is we tell JavaScript, if today, remember comparing, yeah, is five, then go ahead and update it to be the week, the weekday. All right, we're gonna swap it around. Let's just do it here weekend, and this to be a weekday, just so it's easier. All right, that way we can do the um, boolean in, in positive, right? Because here we say if this is true, then go and do that. So if today is Saturday, go ahead and apply the dish. If it's not Saturday, go ahead and put the weekday dish. All right. Now before I go on, any questions on this? We're clear on the structure we're following. Cool. All right, let's put some pen to paper. Let's actually replace this to do something. All right, so the sentence or the line of code that is actually right now updating this section, yeah, this one here, 
this one here, right? This is currently being updated with this line of code that you saw, right? So this is the sentence that is currently changing it. But as you saw, there's no conditions. It's always doing it, right? So we want to cut this. We want to move it inside our code. So we want to say, we actually want to put it here and here, right? So either way, regardless of the day, we want JavaScript to update this section, right? With something. What we need to change is this. Now, obviously, if we left the code as it is, it would always show placeholder because regardless of the of the condition, whether it's met or not, it's gonna go and update that. So let's put just change that. So if today is five, that is Saturday, put the weekend dish. So instead of placeholder, we want to show the weekend dish, which is the one that we've got here. That is the weekend special, right? So that's the weekend special. But this is an array, so I need to get the first element of the array, right? So I'm just gonna put this. And I'm going to invoke the first element of the array, which is zero. Remember, this is an array. So it's got multiple elements. The first one having the index zero, the second one having index one. Okay. So that's that. That's going to go and update if today is Saturday. Now, if today is not Saturday, go ahead and update this with the weekday variable, which is this one here. Weekday special. And as you saw earlier, I'm going to just invoke the first element. All right. Now let's check it out what happens. Just go ahead and update that. I have the uh, muffin, which is the weekday special. All right. Now that's because it, for some reason, is getting me this number five. Um, let's just assume it should be actually six. Don't worry about it. It will make sense in just no time. So you see that right now because it's the weekend is the cheesecake, right? Now, if it's not, um, that just uh, completely automated. So any day of the week you come here is going to change. Now. You say, Roger, but the weekends have two days. How can I put multiple conditions here? Because this is only checking one day, okay? So I'm gonna show you, it's a bit outside of the scope, but I just thought I'll show you anyway. So this is happening when this condition is met. To put multiple conditions, I can do a second element, which is an or. To do or is effectively this double pipe, okay? Spend some time later to try to identify this key because it's not very common in the keyboards. So you might probably need to use the shift or something. So you need to put this pipe twice, okay? What this pipe is doing is saying, I want you JavaScript to check whether this condition is true. So it's saying, if this condition or this condition are true, go ahead and do that, okay? So instead of playing with one condition, we're just simply adding two conditions. And we're telling JavaScript, if this condition or this condition are true, either or, go ahead and execute this code. If not, go ahead and execute the second piece of code. All right. So with that, now if um, we can just forget about uh, everything, every time this script is run, our website will be updated automatically. And in fact, I could just go ahead and um, you know do more if statements and show a different special each day of the week, right? So that's just to show you and give you some intuition as to some of the power that we can do to automate some of the tasks with the if else statement in conjunction with all the elements that we saw earlier, right? Now, before I proceed, let me just give you a bit of a rundown of what we've seen thus far. So what we've seen, just to recap a bit, is we've been done the interaction to the date object, okay? As we just saw. Uh, we know now how to update, obtain from it what days of the week and hour of the day. Also, you should be a bit familiar with how to get year. If you have a look at the example, uh, the guess the answer exercise we did earlier, that uh, led year 2020, you also can find there a bit, some of the logic on how to obtain the year that you're currently on. Um, we know now how to do comparisons and days of booleans, as well as manage the control flow through if else statement. So um, that in conjunction with using functions with the control flow, that's very um, important concepts that you've, that you've mastered. So good job on this. Um, it's a lot uh, to ingest. Again, as I mentioned earlier, let me know if there's any questions. Otherwise, just watch the video later that we'll send you after this session. So just make sure you ground those concepts, okay? Now, that's what we've seen today. But for those that attended the previous lessons, um, you probably don't realize, but we've gone through quite a lot. And don't take my word for it. Um, let me just show you before that. Um, in four sessions, we've seen all of these things here. So a uh, very good job on all of those, all of you that have attended those sessions. If you haven't, don't worry. Uh, you still got a chance to just go and watch the videos again. So that's effectively all the aspects that we've seen in just four sessions. So it's a lot of information. It's a lot of um, tools that you've got now within your fingertips to use 
and hopefully with all of this, you should be able to build some website, you know, with a with a, an interesting degree of functionality. Okay. Now, as usual, and I'm gonna pass it on to Ruth in a second. But as usual, that's my uh, any questions thus far before I move on. Uh, someone. Okay, I'll address this question after. I think someone just typed something, so um, I'll I'll address this after if that's okay. So um, that's what we've seen in four sessions. As usual, um, we. I've been talking too much, so now I just want to turn the tables, and I want to give you um, some, um, you know, tasks for you to explore to continue learning. Now, what we've learned over the last two lessons, so today's lesson and the previous lesson, I would challenge you to create a new section displaying one element. So, for example, a special item or an element on sale or specific element on your website. Um, then display one volume Monday to Friday and one volume the weekends, similar to what we've done. Um, for, to do so, you're going to need the function, the date, object, and conditionals, and bonus, uh, in addition to the above, try to do that so it's displayed on Friday evening. So in, um, instead of just doing it day of week, actually add onto the mix doing it specific after a specific hour, right? So say, for example, I want something to be displayed between, I don't know, 5 and 10 p.m. on Friday. You're now in a position to do something like that. So you can just really offer really targeted um, um changes to your website, right? So whether it's a blog or whether it's a, a portfolio, you can actually now start uh, adding a very interesting degree of functionality to your um, to your website. So as usual, um, share your uh, website, create a code pen, it's free, and then share it with us for some uh, personalized feedback, okay? Um, Ruth, I don't know if you wanna take it up from here. Um, yep, no problem. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to answer that question. Um, yes. That's in that's the chat, true. first of yeah. all. So, the user A, I just searched for get day. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. So yeah, so so uh, yeah, so user A. So um, what user A is saying is that um, uh, the get method for date uh, returns the day of the week from zero to six, right? Being uh, Sunday zero and Monday one. So that's why we actually saw today uh, five. That's a very good point. Um, so the reason why we saw uh, number five, excuse me, six on the on the on the number today being Saturday is because instead of Monday to Sunday, the get method follows the Sunday to Monday um, uh, schedule, right? And so the first day Sunday, which is zero, Monday is one, and so on, all the way to Saturday, which is the number six. So thanks a lot for that, user A. That's uh, that's just addressed a bit of confusion that I had earlier. So thanks for that. So again. That's effectively what it uh, uh, what it, it, it just answers the question. Uh, there's also a question from Marina. Uh, um, yeah, so Marina, what you're doing here is that you're only invoking the entire date object. So what happens here is that uh, you're getting the whole raw uh, data, right? So what you need to do is D, create another variable, say for example, today, and inside that variable do D dot get day brackets, and that should give you the number, right? Because what you're printing right now in your console is the whole block, is the whole raw data, right? The unprocessed data, right? The whole object data. Uh, you're not leveraging the method. So just do, for example, let today to be d dot get day brackets, and that should give you the number. Yeah, try that. And if it doesn't work, let's know. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's that. Any other questions on what we've seen thus far? Uh, Cool, Ruth. Do you want me to? Do you want a screen share, or do you want me to screen share? If you can, yeah. um, maybe keep sharing your screen and show the different. So what we yes. wanted to do now was just yeah. maybe have a quick look at some of the projects that some of the people yeah. that I know have attended uh, all of the workshops uh, that's have right. done, just to have a quick go through them because there's some yeah. really really cool work. That's yeah. So th this is mine. I'm a terrible designer, so as you, you can totally get right with this yellow color. So this is mine. Um, we've got here one from Marta. Um, this is an astonishing design. I got to tell you, like, uh, this design is so clean. I'm so liking it. So we see here, she's got a section at the top, um, an image here, uh, managing also headlines, um, uh, a nice spaced um, sort of a headline here, a bit of a list. Then here, she's still working on some, um, integrating it with, um, uh, with some additional functionality here which I'm just curious to see what that is. As an image, okay, you need to um, um, load it. And then there's some links here as well. 
some uh, hyperlinks then just go to her social so it's a very nice clean sort of um, um portfolio um not a lot of javascript but also it's also do that for portfolios you might not need a lot of javascript um i would love to maybe uh, another day to just go through this with you um and then we perhaps can give you some additional tips on, on things that you can uh, um, improve and continue building upon but this is excellent and the design i love and the image is just awesome so i just really like it so yeah good good job on that really really proud to see and really happy to see that um oh and, and Marta says she's already have a second version so okay she's uh <laughs> full of secrets excellent so feel free to share it with us the second version if you want we can just go from there and um yeah but just just as it stands this is good command of you know basics on css and and uh on html so good on you well done uh that's one of the examples um another example comes from so i'm just closing comes from uh, sophia so again very clean design um she's followed here i just really like this sent this um line here i just curious how you've done it uh all right just a, just a manual yeah cool looks nice um then some sections here uh following a bit the uh, process that we follow so she's got some works for sale what's really cool about it is that sophia has put a lot of javascript here it's really cool to see so string concatenation excellent um then she's getting the latest so this is automated so if she adds additional elements into her list it will always display the latest element so um in the late this is effectively automated so excellent job there sophia in automating uh those elements um then displaying some works here um yeah really cool creating a function so she's managed to just create a divider function that's one of the assignments that we saw in previous lessons really well done to master that uh, and then this one she's automated that really good job on on automating the sign um so what you see here is that um she's managed to use that function what you could do here sophia is leverage that function and then in each sentence you could actually go ahead and update that i don't know if you're doing it on photos photo sub size okay yeah so she's using the map excellent so she's leveraging this function and then instead of adding on sale to every element manually this is done automatically because she's doing a map and leveraging the function excellent job here sophia i don't know if you're in the call sorry um but if you are um this is really good job integrating a video top-notch stuff and then also um you know adding icons and yeah this is really really cool i'll tell you i'll, I'll share you a little one with you uh that's for everybody so string concatenation is a process we can follow, but I'll just show you another one that is actually quite cool. So let me just show you, Ruth, Ruth if I may, just, just a second. Of course, of course. Yeah, no so actually for string concatenation, Tim, if you wanna, you can do that. So string concatenation is nothing but, um, Sophia, if you're in the call, I'm just gonna do some changes here, but don't worry, that's not gonna be safe. Okay, so don't worry about it. Um, so what you're doing here is variable, right? You're doing here variable plus some text, right? text and then you're doing plus variable right that's what we're doing that string concatenation is one of the concepts that we showed i'll show you another concept that is really cool can I remember the name because javascript is full of like concept like there's a lot of theory people that do like javascript theory that tell you not that right what it's these and it's not accurate but uh what you could do instead is actually you can do um um it's actually sorry inverted commas so not double string you have to find this in your keyword in a mac is in the top left okay without shift you get this inverted commas right and that's actually applicable for everybody in the call yeah then you do um you can write down text here so say um some random text here right and then that's effectively what you could place here right so just go ahead and run this you just get uh some random text here right now you'll say, hey, Roger, there's no variable here. What you could do after is actually to just make it a bit cleaner. What you can do is you can just add a dollar symbol and then I think it's square brackets in JavaScript. Yeah. And then what you could do is you could just copy this inside those square brackets. So it's much cleaner. So what you could do is um, this. Actually, let me try to replicate. Yeah, just do that. And then you're concatenating this in a much clearer way, right? So all of this is text and you just forget about the plus symbols and stuff. So if you just run that, you see how you can merge text with a variable, right? So see here, some random text and then the actual value, you just do something like this, right? 
and then you just merge that. So I could just do, for example, something like this. I could turn this into uh, this. Check, check it out after. I'm not going to spend a lot of time now, but I just thought it would be cool to just um, show it to you whilst we've got it. Um, it's just effectively putting symbols and then the square bracket. And then with that, you can just get pretty much the same results, <clears throat> but it's a bit cleaner, the syntax. So it's just easier to debug and so on. So um, yeah, so there we have it, right? So that's another way. So this and this is doing the same thing, but as you see, this syntax is a bit cleaner once you know it, because it's just dollar symbol, square brackets, and then you just check the variable. And then here you just free to put any text that you want, right? So you can just type it. So you forget about plus and so on, okay? So that's another way of doing it. So really good job there, Sophia. Um, so rock on. Hope that helps, uh, this little tip. Uh, let's say they've got another one. Um, that's from Irina. Um, nice. This is a really cool illustration here. Uh, cool. Oh, so choose a QA. Okay, excellent. Right, so she's got here section, um, some blocks. That's something we talked about in the first lessons, which is dividing the website in logical blocks. She's done an excellent job in dividing it. It's really cool that she uses this um, color, background color to reinforce some of the sections. So it plays really well. And I really like the color scheme. So the colors that she uses, this purple, green, and yellow, are actually um, come quite nicely. And she's got here, I think, yeah. So this is a hyperlink. So that if you just click on it, it will just connect to her profile on LinkedIn. So yeah, she's got also that uh, hyperlink here. So this is also really cool. Um, it's more than CSS and HTML, but uh, I think it's excellent. So I think, um, just with some tweaks here, and if you've got some um, some time and some specific scenarios that you want to build on top, I think with what you've learned in JavaScript, you can just take this website onto a whole new level. So this looks really cool. I love that color scheme, and this drawing is amazing. So yeah, uh, that's pretty good. I, I, we just picked those, uh, Ruth. I just thought. Um, yeah, yeah. No, they're all really, really nice. And yeah, I think Arena had actually sent us another one that was uh, cafe as well. Um, but oh, right. But these are really cool to see them just now. Um, right. And if anybody's in the Slack, you're, feel free to share them and you can take a look at uh, other people's projects as sure. well. Yeah. So, I mean, as Roger mentioned, this is the last of our four workshops. Um, but there will be other things coming up over the next few weeks, next few months. And so what we really encourage you to is stay in touch with us. Um, to give you an example, we have an uh, introduction to Git workshop which will be coming up uh, before the end of the year. Uh, it's not yet on our Eventbrite, but we just keep an eye on the Eventbrite and we will post it on there. We're also doing a women who have transitioned into tech event um, before the end of the year. And so that'll be with people that have been through our boot camps and they're now working in their first tech jobs. Uh, all of them finished the boot camp mid Christ COVID pandemic and they all managed to get a job during the time. Um, and so feel free to join that session as well. I'll put the link in the chat just now. Um, let me just put these here before I forget. Next thing, as Rog mentioned, we do have a Slack channel that was specifically for the workshops. Um, and so you're still welcome to join it. Although, because this is the last session, it's likely to be normally what the staff, they normally come out of that Slack group and we move everything over to a community Slack channel. So I'm gonna post them both in here and feel free to join them both. One of them, like I said, is just the workshop channel. So it's for anyone who's attended these workshops and you can just reach out to Ty or Rog to get support um, over the next few weeks. If not, we've got this community channel, which has just got all these information, resources, um, to help you with your code, but also if you're looking for a job, if you want to speak to other people that have been to our courses or anything, uh, you can reach out to people in there. So I'm going to add both of those links just now. Bear with me. And this is the community Slack here. Sorry, there's lots of links. I will also send these in an email afterwards as well. So you have everything. And last of all, just because this is our last workshop, we would really love it if we could get some feedback. So we created a little survey that um, we'd really appreciate if you could just take a couple of minutes at the end uh, to fill it in. And that's that. Uh, that, would, that would be super useful, Tim. If you could spare just a few seconds, just um, putting a, some your thoughts on the survey, that really helps us sort of uh, make these sessions more useful and uh, you know adjust it. So if you could spare some a few seconds, that would be amazing. It's pretty fast, so. Yeah. Um, 
yeah we, we timed ourselves so it was definitely less than five minutes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to yeah take some time to fill that out and then last of all Roger, if you can just show that last slide you've got there um if you're interested in our boot camps or our courses we've not got any more this year um but we will be starting up again in january so um we've got a full stack development boot camp and our data analytics and our product management when they're all starting on the 11th of January. So if you want any more information about that, I'm going to also just write my email address here in the chat. Feel free to just pop a, send me an email and we can have a call and we can chat in more detail there. Perfect. I think that's everything from us. I don't know if anyone's got any last questions uh, at the moment while we're here. Um, if not, like I said, you can reach us all on Slack or by email um and keep up the coding keep um making cool projects keep breaking things and keep in touch with us so we can see how your journey progresses so does anyone has any questions about um any of what uh, ruth just mentioned or any of the contents of the lesson or anything in general uh, we've got a couple of minutes here to address them um otherwise i want to echo uh, ruth's thoughts um continue your journey um coding is daunting and when i was teaching myself how to do it, something I would suggest is you need to put consistency, right? Um, I would recommend for you to now that you've got a bit of foundation, continue playing um, with it, whether it's on your own terms or you decide to join a bootcamp like CodePad or, or CodeUp or others. Um, but it's important that you just keep like that momentum. It's, it's hard and it takes time, but um, I think I think joining some resources like the Slack channel that would mention it's, it's useful because um, when I was learning code on my own, it's, it, you feel a bit alone sometimes. And so having just a bunch of people that are just as lost as you are, that's sort of a bit of an extra motivation. So that helps, but um, yeah, um, it's been an absolute pleasure from my end. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's any questions, just, just let us know. Otherwise, um, I think that's pretty much all what we've got for today. And this recording from this session, because I know there was a lot to take on there, we will add it just as we've been doing before. We'll send it to you uh, by email and put it on the Slack group so you can go through it again um, at another point. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you, team. Stay in touch. Bye bye. Bye.